Hi, this is Mr. Heinrich with another FRQ from AP Classroom. This is going to be AP Physics 2, Unit 3, FRQ 2. And we're looking at two plates that have charge on them. This plate is positive, negative. This amount of charge Q is equal to this amount of charge Q. These plates are separated by some distance D. And whenever you have this situation where you have two parallel plates separated like this, and they have the same amount of charge, this region of space has a uniform electric field. That is to say that if I point to position A or position B, or any position for that matter, it's the same amount of electric field strength, electric field magnitude, however you want to say it. What direction is that electric field? It's up, right? So whether I'm looking at A or B, the electric field is directed upward. Why is that? Because we formed a convention I say we like I had something to do with it, but there was a convention formed in physics that said if a positive, small positive test charge was placed at a point, what direction would it go? If I place one here, it would go up. If I place it at A, it would go up. It would go up for two reasons. Not only is it repelled from these positives, but it's attracted to these negatives. Similarly, at B, if I put it here, it would go up. And so there's your answer. You have an equal amount of electric field strength at both of those points, and it's directed upward in either case. All right, let's look at point, uh, part B. Part B basically says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it fast. If I put a proton here, it would zip upward and have a velocity VP when it reaches these negative charges. If I put an electron here, Similarly, it would zip downward and would have a velocity VE when it reaches this point. And they want us to determine that speed VE in terms of the mass of the electron, the mass of the proton, and also the velocity of the proton. So here's what I have on my sheet for part B. Those are my givens. I need to find VE. And I want to, I want to remind you that the charge on a proton and the charge on an electron are the same amount. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so I'm just going to say for either one of these, the charge is Q. All right, keeping that in mind, let's move forward to getting this velocity for the electron. If I have a negative set of charges on this plate, uh, equal number of positives down here. Let's start with our proton. If I put a proton here, we know it has stored up electric potential energy. Electric potential energy here, not only because it wants to get away from these positives, but it also wants to go to these negatives. So it has this ability to do work, right? It could exert a force through a distance on something else that was in its way, correct? So we got potential energy in that proton and that is going to convert to kinetic energy when it gets to the other side here, kinetic energy. And that speed right there of that arrow, Vp. All right. Now, if I'm looking at my equation, my equation would be that that potential energy converts into that kinetic energy such that the total energy is conserved. This electric potential energy can be expressed as QED. Remember, Q it could be the charge of a proton or an electron in this case. E, there's a uniform electric field, and there's some distance separating these two plates, D. That would be equal to one-half mass of the proton, velocity of the proton squared, right? There we go. Let's look at the other side of the coin. If I have a negative charge here, it's got potential energy at this point because it wants to get away from these negatives or get toward those positives. It comes across that distance, D, having a velocity that we'll call VE, and therefore a kinetic energy. So looking at the equation for the electron, it would be the same exact setup, right? In fact, the charge of the electron is identical to that of the proton in magnitude. E, electric field strength, D. And that would be equal to, this time we would not say mass of the proton, we'd say mass of the electron, velocity of the electron squared. Look at this. If A equals B and A equals C, then doesn't B equal C, right? These two expressions must be equal to one another. And so I would come down here and I would say one half MPVP squared equals one half 
MEVE squared, and I would cross out my halves. I would solve for my VE, and I would get VE equals MPVP squared divided by ME. And we are done with part B. This is a pretty quick one. Part C is difficult only in concept, I suppose, but not necessarily uh, long either. So let's get to part C. Part C. Let's do some arguing or some reasoning, right? All right. It says the plates are moved farther apart with each plate maintaining the same net charge. Let me zero in here so you can see what I'm reading. Same net charge. In a coherent paragraph length response, apply concepts of work and energy to explain how the electric potential difference between the plates changes, if at all, when the plates are moved further apart. Okay, let's think about this. We have these two plates. They were some distance apart from each other, right? Negatives and positives. And now they're gonna be moved further apart. Let's just move them some distance apart and let's reason out what happens to the electric potential difference between the plates, making sure that's what they want us to express, explain how the electric potential difference between the plates changes. And it does change, it does change. So if I was gonna move this plate, how is that affecting, how is that work that I'm doing, that movement, affecting the potential difference between the plates? Okay, I want to remind you of something. I'm going to start with, I'm going to get to this idea eventually, but let me start with this idea that the work done by an external force in these situations will be equal to a positive change in potential energy, electric potential energy in this case. So if I am exerting some external force on this through some delta X, right, some displacement, that is a positive work because both the force and the displacement are in the same exact direction. That is the very idea of a positive work. And if this side is positive, then you can be sure that this side is positive, right? Now you might think, well, what about what he just brought up, right? Is, he, is that gonna confuse us? Well, not really. The electrostatic force was pointing down the entire time as I moved it a distance upward, and that would be considered a negative work. Now, a negative work, and this negative here for the change of potential energy, the work done by um, the work done by the the conservative force. There we go. The work done by the conservative force, those would cancel out, and you would still get a positive change of potential energy, right? You'd end up with your positive change of potential energy. That's why this is a lot more confusing to look at. And just to clarify, the work done by conservative forces always, always equals a negative change of potential energy. Whether we're talking about gravity or electrostatic forces, that's just a finer point that I want to make sure you have down before you take that AP test. But I would say, let's not look at this. That can kind of confuse the issue, which may have already. So let's look back at this. The work done by external forces will always equal the positive change of potential energy. Now, so if the potential energy of this system changes in a positive manner, it increases, so to speak, how can we relate that to the idea of potential difference? Well, what can I say? I could say that the change in, sometimes they use the variable u, but I'm gonna use PE since I already started with that, would be equal to Q delta V, right? Or you could say work is equal to charge times the change in the potential or the potential difference, you could just say, right? So since this is positive and this did not change, didn't Q remain constant for both plates? then isn't it true that the change in potential, the potential difference is also positive? And that's your proof right there. So instead of sitting here and writing the whole thing, I've explained it out. So what I would start with is I would say, 
To move the plates further apart, you would need an external force. That external force would be in the same direction as the displacement, which would create a positive work. That positive work would create an increase in electric potential energy. And based on the relationship, that electric potential energy or the change in electric potential energy is equivalent to the charge times the change in potential. There must also be an increase in the potential, or there must also be an increase in the potential difference, you could say.